Oh yes, SpaceX's most recent Starship iteration has commenced showcasing its impressive capabilities. The company initiated a pivotal static fire trial on December 20th, engaging the Starship upper stage prototype dubbed Ship 28. This test involved a brief ignition of the vehicle's Raptor engines while securely tethered at the Starbase site in South Texas. The noteworthy Flight 3 Starship successfully executed a comprehensive static fire, utilizing all six Raptor engines. This milestone was shared by the company a few hours after the event via a post on X which included remarkable footage capturing the intensity of the test. It all began with an alert from SpaceX notifying of an impeding space test scheduled from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, setting the stage for this groundbreaking event. At precisely 1.37 p.m. local in South Texas, the ignition sequence of Ship 28's engines commenced, a vital moment in SpaceX's mission. The test of the rocket's six engines proceeded as planned, showcasing a nominal performance as the Raptors ignited, casting a mesmerizing flame for a fleeting yet significant duration. Observing the spectacle, it appeared that the initial ignition involved the three sea-level engines, succeeded by the activation of the three vacuum raptors, with the sea-level engines continuing to fire before all six engines simultaneously shut down. This seamless coordination of engine ignition and shutdown exemplified SpaceX's precision engineering and operational finesse. This milestone stands as a testament to SpaceX's remarkable efficiency. In the past, such tests might have have required multiple attempts, but this time the entire countdown and ignition process unfolded seamlessly, a testament to SpaceX's expertise. Notably, the installation of the Raptor engines occurred four months ago at the McGregor testing facility, marking this static fire as their first operation since then. Crucially, both the rocket and its ground support equipment emerged unscathed post-test with only a few damaged tiles, a minor issue in the grand scheme. Additionally, the subsequent testing of Ship 28's payload bay yielded positive results, signifying its continued functionality following the rigorous static fire trial. With the successful completion of this crucial test, attention turns to the next phase as Ship 28 is set to return to the high bay for further preparations. Plans include the inclusion of a dummy payload, a significant step in simulating real mission conditions, solidifying the vehicle's readiness for future endeavors. There is more news on the horizon. A recent overpressure notice hints at potential developments, possibly heralding the awaited Booster 10 static fire test. Notably, this particular prototype recently demonstrated a distinctive movement when its grid fins exhibited activity post-test, following its counterpart's trial. Upon the completion of these critical tests, the stage is set for the stacking of the Starship upper stage onto the booster, marking an essential milestone toward completing the launch vehicle. This progress signifies the imminent readiness of the hardware for Integrated Flight Test 3 poised to propel SpaceX into the next phase of its ambitious objectives. The upcoming third flight aims to push the boundaries further, envisaging Starship's controlled landing in the ocean north of Kauai, Hawaii. In addition, there is speculation about a potential in-space propellant transfer test, although this aspect remains unconfirmed. SpaceX's current focus on Ship 28 and its flight partner Booster 10, a super-heavy prototype, underscores the company's drive to expedite Starship's subsequent flight. However, the timeline remains uncertain. Even with favorable testing outcomes, SpaceX might encounter a delay in acquiring a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA, in the wake of Flight 2's incident, is conducting an inquiry and will withhold the license until completing the investigation and confirming any necessary corrective measures by SpaceX. Kathy Luters, SpaceX's general manager overseeing the Starbase launch site near Brownsville, expressed the company's goal of targeting the first quarter of the upcoming year for the third test flight. She remarked optimistically, it would be great if we were in the first quarter, definitely. However, considering the meticulous process, she noted Elon Musk's eagerness for a December launch, but acknowledged the practical challenges. Musk's fervent desire for rapid progress is admirable, reflecting SpaceX's commitment to innovation and exploration, despite the meticulous attention to safety and regulatory procedures. The journey ahead for SpaceX before the Starship can ferry humans back to the moon is indeed an extensive and multifaceted one. The company faces a series of crucial demonstrations, launching both the Super Heavy and Starship into low Earth orbit and executing successful recovery.
recoveries. Moreover, a rapid turnaround of these rockets for subsequent launches is imperative. Additionally, mastering on-orbit refueling is pivotal, especially if SpaceX intends to utilize the Starship as a lunar lander. A prerequisite set by NASA involves conducting at least one uncrewed mission to the moon to earn the agency's trust in the vehicle's reliability and safety standards. The ambitious timeline SpaceX operates under necessitates achieving all these milestones within two years to align with NASA's deadline of a crewed moon landing by late 2025, an event poised to mark humanity's return to lunar exploration since 1972. Beyond its lunar aspirations, the Starship holds potential for diverse roles once operational. It's poised not only to pave the way for human activity on the moon, but also to fulfill a spectrum of other missions. From deploying sizable structures like space stations and space telescopes to realizing Elon Musk's ambitious vision of establishing a settlement on Mars, the Starship promises to revolutionize space exploration. But Starship isn't the only one racing to meet its deadline. ULA's Vulcan is also in a rush. Vulcan, now fully assembled at Cape Canaveral, Florida, marks a milestone for the ULA. It's stacked with Astrobotics Lunar Lander, set for an inaugural flight next month, replacing Atlas V and... Delta IV. Standing tall at 202 feet, Vulcan's final preparations are ongoing for liftoff on January 8th at 2.18 a.m. Eastern after a delay from December 24th due to ground system issues. The launch timing aligns with specific lighting requirements crucial for Astrobotics lunar lander trajectory. ULA aims to boost its launch rate, selling 70 Vulcan launches, half to commercial clients and the rest to the U.S. military, including 38 missions for Amazon's Project Kuiper. Despite setbacks including including engine delays and a stage explosion, ULA is optimistic, planning engine recovery and aiming for an average of two Vulcan launches per month by 2025. Astrobotics CEO expresses confidence in the upcoming launch. Highlighting the engineering behind the Peregrine lander's journey powered by Vulcan's BE-4 engines from Blue Origin and solid rocket boosters from Northrop Grumman. And for our last entry into the latest in space-related news, Firefly Aerospace's Alpha rockets later for launch as Fly the Lightning was postponed due to weather. Firefly Aerospace planned to launch its fourth ever mission yesterday, December 20th, but then scrubbed due to weather. That mission is called Fly the Lightning. Fly the Lightning is meant to send an electronically steerable antenna, or ESA, payload developed by aerospace giant Lockheed Martin to low Earth orbit. The instrument will demonstrate faster on-orbit sensor calibration to deliver rapid capabilities to U.S. warfighters, Firefly represented wrote in a mission description. The sensor will be deployed about 54 and a half minutes after launch if all goes according to plan. Fly the Lightning will be the fourth orbital mission for Firefly and the 95-foot tall or 29-meter Alpha rocket. Fly 3, a mission for the U.S. Space Force called Victus Knox, was a triumph. Alpha lifted off just 27 hours after the Space Force gave the order, a shorter turnaround than on any previous national security mission. The rocket also deployed its primary payload, a satellite that will perform a space domain awareness mission at the proper altitude. Though Fly the Lightning's customer is a private company, the U.S. military will be watching the liftoff with keen interest. The launch is being observed by members of the U.S. Space Force Tactically Responsive Space Team to inform future missions and the requirements for the repeatable on-demand launch capabilities, Firefly wrote in the mission description. Undoubtedly, it's been a prosperous year for Firefly Aerospace, marking a significant stabilization since coming under the ownership of AE Industrial Partners. Reflecting on its journey, Firefly is set to celebrate a decade of existence in January, navigating through different ownerships and managerial transitions. Despite the turbulent past, this period has witnessed the emergence of a remarkably capable space enterprise. In September, the Alpha rocket made its first fully successful launch, performing a rapid response liftoff for U.S. Space Systems Command with the Victus Knox mission. That payload was integrated and launched within 27 hours of receiving the launch order. It is possible that Alpha will launch a second time this week, and next year, the company may launch three to five times, which would be impressive. Firefly is more than a launch company, however. It has business lines that include its Blue Ghost Lander, an in-space vehicle called Elytra that could fly for the first time in 2024, and a partnership with Northrop Grumman to build larger Miranda engines for a medium-lift launch vehicle. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access 
access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up and happy holidays.